We have a second speaker this evening. He's been in our club several, several years. He's speaking from the advanced communication series manual tonight, the storytelling manual. The storyteller, Paul Sop, will be presenting his new fable title, Apples to Bananas. Please welcome Paul Sop, Paul Abram, to the left. Thank you, thank you. There was once a banana on a banana tree. This is not unusual as most bananas do grow on banana trees. This one, however, grew on a tree that was surrounded by apple trees. The banana stared at the apples all day long, for there is not much of an app a banana can do to entertain itself while on a banana tree. The apple trees were taller than the banana trees and had an air of majesty about them. I do not like apples, the banana thought. They are all such a conceited sort. <laughs> One day, an apple noticed the banana staring at it and became quite, quite nervous. Why do you stare at us so long, all day long, with such a hate-filled glare? Because I do not like you. You are all a bunch of fruity losers. <laughs> the apple was astonished. With all due respect, you too are a fruit. <laughs> but make such hurtful words. We apples are high in antioxidants. We make delicious pies and get along peachy with ice cream. I have no ill thoughts towards you. The banana was not impressed. <laughs> You must wait till you are picked. Maybe wait till you are ripe before you can be picked, processed, peeled, and eaten. I am ready to leave the tree while I am still green. <laughs> Do you think, because we both grow on trees, that we are of equal stature? Nay, O oh bearer of little seed. <laughs> said the apple. The plant upon which you grow, although called a banana tree, is not technically a tree itself, as it has no woody stem. And as far as ice cream is concerned, you must first be split and drenched with hot fudge and other assorted toppings before you can be considered a superb tree. One might say you are the cause of obesity and diabetes. <laughs> the banana swung wildly with rage. Words such as those you utter have brought nations to shame throughout all the ages. The apple is often illustrated as the forbidden fruit, and it is well known that an apple is the cause of death for many princesses. The apple tree began to shake, and the apples it bore wept. You know not of what you speak, Sir Banana. From our seeds grow beautiful trees that clean the air and nourish children throughout all the world. Plus, we bring shelter to many of God's creatures. Oh, the banana laughed for it was quite a sight to see so many silly apples crying in the tree. <laughs> As he laughed, the other bananas remained silent. A monkey had jumped onto the banana tree. <laughs> one by one, the bananas were devoured, all except the one who hated the apples. He turned to see the monkey reaching for him. The peeled remains of his family lay on the ground beside the banana tree. Well, I saved the best for last, said the monkey with a neck. <laughs> the banana became quite timorous. As the monkey reached 
reached and grabbed him. Oh, Mr. Monkey, look over here, Mr. Monkey, said the apple. Surely, with your human-like intellect, you must be you must be aware that an apple makes the most scrumptious dessert. The monkey looked at the apple tree and smiled. Yes, the monkey looked and the smell of fresh apple juice from the tears of the crying apples tickled his senses. Well, indeed, I am quite a fancier of the Newton Pippin and the Granny Smith. <laughs> yeah. He released his victim and proceeded toward the apple tree. The ground was littered with banana peels left by the thoughtless monkey. As the monkey proceeded toward the apple tree, he slipped on a banana peel and crashed into the apple tree. The impact shook the tree. The apples fell onto the monkey and killed him. <laughs> the banana looked at all of the fallen apples and begged for forgiveness. And from that moment on, the world was blessed with heavenly apple banana pie a la mode. <laughs> the moral of this lesson is, do not pass ill judgment upon others, for they may one day be your friends and save your life. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Paul, excuse me, Paul Sop, Paul Amro. It gives me great pleasure to critique your speech. You, your speech really starts from your introduction, and there was a clever twist on the name, Paul Sop which is obviously a reference to Aesop, as in Aesop's fables. The things I liked about your speech is, of course, your name, and you did have an attention getting introduction. You immediately started with your loud voice, looking at the crowd, your vocal variety, and, and your pitch, and your volume. It grabbed me, grabbed my attention, and it kept me throughout the whole story. Also, your job in telling the fable uh, is there's very specific things that make a speech or a story a fable, and you did satisfy them all very well. It has to be simple. Your words were simple. Your sentence structure was simple. It has to deal with a universal subject. And judgment, friendship, that kind of thing, that's something that we all can relate to. And it also has to have the elements of a good story. You had a very easy to understand, straightforward plot. You described the setting very well with the description of the trees and the heights and everybody hanging there on the branches. You had very, very good character development. So we knew, or at least we were led to believe, who was the good guy and who was the bad guy in the speech. Not only from your tone of voice, but, but from what they were saying and how they were saying it. And there was also conflict, which is common to all fables. You had a conflict, of course, between the apples and the bananas. Your speech was very entertaining. Uh, your delivery of the speech was perfect. It was flawless. Your vocal variety, your body language. You used different voices so that we all knew who was speaking just by the voice, just by the way that your words were being spoken. The only thing I could suggest to you, uh, what I would have liked to see, is because this is a story, uh, don't rely on your notes so much as you did. I don't know how much preparation you had, but just maybe just step aside from the lectern so that we feel like you're just maybe in the middle of a circle type of thing was one of the objectives of this project. But other than that, what I got out of this speech, I really felt like I was a little kid listening to a story. I was engaged. I looked at the audience. Everybody was laughing. There wasn't one person who was looking away or wasn't interested or paying attention. You did a very, very good job, not only your content, but your deliveries. It was a perfect speech. Thank you. Thank you, sir.